Hey, ding, ding. Uh, Mr. Wood here. Welcome to the first installment of the flipped AP U.S. History Classroom. This is Unit 1, uh, Section 1. Um, brace yourself. The A-Push exam is coming. Um, that's Lord Eddard Stark from the Game of Thrones series. Bonus points on the first reading quiz tomorrow um, if you can tell me what the full Stark saying is. Okay, cool. And it's not the Lannisters. They always pay their debts, and we don't like them. But anyway, this is the introduction PowerPoint to Welcome to AP U.S. History. Okay, you will have a reading quiz tomorrow based on this and the chapter one stuff you had to read. Okay, moving forward. Prehistory in 30 seconds, not sung by bunnies. Uh, we've had this history for many years. You know what's going on with this. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on prehistory. If you don't know it, read chapter one. Okay, Pangea. Pangea is here. Uh, this is what all the continents looked like when they were shoved together like clay. Um, it does look like kind of a clay version of the Death Star, doesn't it? But anyway, um, that's what they looked like before the continental shift. North America and South America went that way. Uh, all these guys went that way. I sh I sh Antarctica went soup all the way down. So that's Pangea. That's what life was like before the, the split. Okay. What comes next? A lot of people think the land bridge theory. That's the next thing I want you to know. Um, there was uh, a land mass um, between uh, Siberia, uh, Western Asia, uh, excuse me, Eastern Asia, and Alaska. And there were some theories. Some people believe that uh, some of the peoples came off the one side of the land bridge and came down about, you know, one-thirds towards the west coast in, like, the Colorado, Utah area. Uh, another believed migratory path of the peoples came down along the west coast itself uh, into the California, uh, northern Mexico area, some of the first peoples. But we know the land bridge theory, okay? Be familiar with that. Be able to explain what that theory is in detail, okay? They were here first. Aliens? No. Uh, there were Native Americans here, okay? Native being that they were born here, uh, Americans because they were on the North American continent. That's what we call them now, okay? Not just the Indians, okay? BPC, okay? There were the Incas. Incas were in the Peruvian area um, of the country. You had the Mayans, who were in the Yucatan Peninsula, more Central America, and if their calendar is correct, we won't have to worry about the hate push exam because we'll be dead in December, okay? Got the Aztecs, which are in modern-day Mexico, Tenochtitlan. Um, got some like um, some of the other people there. Um, Chichen Itza is there, one of the wonders of the world. And then you have the Native Americans. What we what we look at is Native Americans: Pueblo, Iroquois, uh, Lumbee, Cherokee, Creek, Choctaw, Black. I could go on and on. Um, or I could sing Tim McGraw's "I'm an Indian Outlaw." Okay, I'm not going to sing that because I don't want to bore you and run you away after the first day. Okay, but these people were here before someone discovered America. No one discovered America. Okay, they were here first. We just found it. Okay, it's a difference. Okay, then you got my people. Okay, the Vikings, because uh, I'm part Scots Irish. Uh, I know I've got some some Viking heritage in me. Uh, but then you got Eric the Red and Leif Erikson. Uh, happy Leif Erikson Day for you SpongeBob fans. But the first thing, if you look down here at the map, the picture just popped up. You've got um, Thing Valir, Iceland where Eric the Red took off and landed in the Eastern Settlement around 986 A.D. Um, then you've got uh, Leif Erikson who took off around 1000 A.D. It's cut off by the screen. But around 1000 A.D. he took up here around the Baffin Island area and landed here at what he called Vinland. Okay? Vinland is modern day Newfoundland. Okay? But the thing about the Vikings, they didn't get credit for discovering America. Why not? Because the world's racist against big, tall, red-headed people from lands far away from their own? No. They didn't write it down. There's no written record. There's no written history of Eric the Red or Leif Erikson ever setting foot over here. Okay, Most of the history is in song and in myth and in stories, but nothing written. So my boys, don't get credit for it, even though you're still number one in my heart. Okay, But those are the people that came from the Viking area. Now, there are some people that are in the uh, Asian area right now um, that are stirring up interest in the new world. And one of those guys is Marco Polo. Okay. Marco Polo. Marco! Okay, no one's around. Uh, Marco Polo basically is spreading around all these stories of wealth and power and all of these wonderful things in the new world. And he's getting people all stirred up. And Marco Polo is one of the main reasons why the English, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French start migrating. Migratory migrating over to um, what they consider the new world, okay? So that's why I put Marco Polo down there. But the thing about it is, who really discovered America? Do you think we know? Hmm. 
Now, my buddy Samuel Elliott Morrison, uh, not really my buddy, but he's a historian that I quote quite heavily in this class. Um, he's on the same sardonic, cynical bent that I am as far as history is concerned. Not everything's, you know, fairy dust and happy floating hearts everywhere. Um, but let's look at what he, who he said discovered America. He said, America was discovered accidentally by a great seaman who was looking for something else, a happy accident. Okay. When it was discovered, it was not wanted. And most of the exploration for the next 50 years was done in hope of trying to get through it or around it. America was named after a man who discovered no part of the new world. That's Amerigo Vespucci. History's like that. Very chancy. Okay. So we all know who discovered America. Let's see who Kermit the Frog thinks discovered America. We take you now to Kermit the Frog for another fast-breaking news story. Oh, yeah, we'll make mine with uh, anchovies and pepperoni. Hmm? Oh, <clears throat> hi-ho, Kermit the Frog here of Sesame Street News, and I'm speaking to you today from Spain, where Christopher Columbus is about to set sail to discover America. And, uh... I think I see Christopher Columbus coming roll, here now. Roll, roll your boat. Uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, excuse me, uh, Christopher. Uh, oh. Kermit the Frog here of Sesame Street News. Oh. And I was wondering if I could ask you a couple questions. Uh, uh, just wondering, how is it that you intend to do uh, that which you uh, are planning to do here uh, today? Uh, I mean, uh, like, uh, how are you going to discover America? Hmm? Oh, well, mm, I'm going to sail across the ocean, and then there are three boats. See? Oh, you got three boats. Yeah, right? there's one. One. That's two. Two. Then there's another boat over here, that's three. Yeah, three boats. Yep. Oh, that certainly sounds like a good plan, sir. I wish you well on it. Well, thanks a lot, uh, but say, what time is it? Oh, it's about, uh, 1492. Oh, listen, if I'm gonna discover America, I gotta get going. Okay. Oh, yes, sir, mateys. What's the main sail belated jibber-jabber and jettison the supercargo? Bye-bye. 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 Oh, here it goes. Look at that. There goes the first boat. Wow. Hope he didn't forget the pizza. Okay, well, listen, uh, Christopher, you had uh, three boats, and you take away one boat, and that leaves two boats, right? Right. Because three take away one leaves two. That's right, and we got to get the other one out right now. Uh -huh. Make mine a mix and mash, swab down the poop deck, starboard at port bow. Bye-bye, oh, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Well, there goes... There goes another boat there. Wow. Now you had two boats, and you take away one boat, and it leaves one boat. Because two take away one, leave one. Right, Char. Right. Listen, I gotta go before the other boat leaves. Okay. This is a very exciting moment, folks, and remember you saw it first on Sesame Street. All ashore is going ashore. Engines full ahead. Red sails in the sunset. Uh, Christopher, Mr. Columbus. Hey, the boat is still tied to the dock. I say the boat is still tied to the dock. Okay, so Kermit the Frog discovered America, right? No. Christopher Columbus is given credit for discovering America, even though we know he wasn't looking for that. He was trying to get to the West Indies. But if any of you play Magic, there's actually a card here, um, right? You destroy any target non-white creature, right? Most of the people he killed. And then you control all non-black creatures, which is a slave trade. I thought that was quite funny. But anyway, if you don't play Magic, go look it up. It's pretty fun. Okay? So, Italian background. Okay, he was not um, Spanish. Okay, uh, he wrecked in Portuguese, and, and wrecked in Portuguese, wrecked in Portugal, uh, and walked up. And um, why is that important? Okay, the Italians weren't weren't explorers yet. Okay, so Portugal um, somewhere is a good place to get started. Really close to Spain under Spanish control. Okay, um, he had this idea: um, go west to get east, right? Because all of this. The land, ma land mass is in the way. He couldn't get there. So he thinks, hey, let's go around the back door. Okay, this shouldn't be too far. You know, it's, it's, the world's flat. You know, you can get around. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, but he thought this had this weird, wacky idea. Hey, let's go west to get east. Um, most to believe the earth was round. So if you could say, oh, say, oh, say, you'd never get there. Okay, he had this really problem, really problem convincing the heads of state of 
Portugal to say, hey, that's a sound like a good idea. No, um, so he had to go somewhere else. So he kind of underestimated the size of the earth. Um, he kind of said from Europe to China was 2,400 miles when the actual distance is about 10,600 miles. Um, and in three ships in the middle of the ocean, that's pretty significant, okay? Uh, food and water, they had the salted beef and stuff, but really they had no potable water on a boat. You had to be able to, to drink salt water. That's not good, okay? So if America had not been where it was, Columbus never would have made it anywhere. He would have died alone, penniless, hungry, right? So maybe America was a good thing that he found it, okay? He made excessive demands of the Spanish, okay? He wanted to be Admiral of the Ocean Seas, okay? The King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella who was funding his explorations, you know, he's like, hey, I want to be Admiral, okay? Uh, he wanted to be Viceroy and Governor General, okay, of the New World, okay? Uh, he wanted to get one-tenth of all value extracted tax-free, meaning I get this stuff, I don't have to pay taxes, nah, 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 nah. right? He wanted that. And he wanted one eighth of all shipping value from the New World to Europe. Hmm. Delusions of grandeur, much? Okay. So, you can't really see it, but he waited seven years for final approval. Seven years. He made this big grand pitch to Ferdinand and Isabella, and basically, and now be baked. And just sat there and sat there and waited. So, in SpongeBob world, and words, seven years later. He leaves August 3rd, 1942, uh, 1492 rather. Uh, that would be, you know, World War II days. But he left, he departed Spain, okay? Drops down to the Canary Islands, which he picks up Sapango, okay? Sapango is right about Japan, okay? Um, then he got found some easterly winds. Easterly winds um, really are favorable, favorable winds that are, they're, they're be able to take uh, a ship and give it some pretty much power, okay? And then he decides, hey, you know, we're really close to home. Uh, yes, sailors, here's your log. Here's where we are um, to uh, home. So don't get frustrated. We're really close. Okay. Um, and due to his errors in calculations, the whole 2,600 mile thing, um, his phony calculations were actually pretty close to the actual truth, which I think is kind of funny. Um, he made landfall at... West Indies, America, uh, October 12th, uh, probably around Samana Key or Samyana Key, um, around San Salvador, Central America. Okay. He found very little Columbus, hence the title. Uh, but he would believe he was just off the coast of Asia. He thought he'd made this just earth shattering discovery. Not so much. Okay. Um, the natives he found there, he named them Indians. Why? because he thought he was in the West Indies, thus Indians, okay? Um, the funny thing is he described him as friendly, naked, and timid. Why would you be timid? All these people coming on the shore, all this white men, never seen a white man before. They're like, uh, kind of cautious, kind of like that cat walking up to you. Okay, do I really want to rub against your leg or do I want to bite you? Okay, that's what the kind of was happening, okay? Um, he found, you know, very small gold, a um, little vein here, a little vein there. Um, not really uh, the riches that Marco Polo was talking about, but he did find a little bit, okay? Um, then he actually explores the other islands, kind of seen around, ends up taking the Santa Maria out and wrecks it, <laughs> wrecks it on Christmas Day, believe it or not. So, yay, Merry Christmas, <laughs> we've hit a sandbar, okay? Um, then he takes the, the pieces of the Santa Maria wreckage and he establishes this trading post, this place for his people to go, the Native Americans to go and trade. He called it La Navidad, okay, in present day Haiti. Um, and that way he thought was a way to kind of work with the natives a little bit. And La Navidad is actually a pretty good idea. Um, then after he sets that up, he goes back to Spain. He's done his job, yay. So, but he's not done, okay. Columbus and Native Americans actually traded quite a few new things, okay. Um, obviously when peoples meet for the first time, if you ever played the game Civilization, things trade, okay? We bring stuff that we have and use some of the things that are there that are already being used, okay? The New World, New World brought, uh, these are the Native American folks, gave us corn, potatoes, tobacco, beans, peppers, manioc, uh, pumpkin, 
squash, tomato, wild rice. Why am I talking like Captain Kirk from Star Trek? I um, don't um, But they also gave us syphilis. So they actually had that virus. We had never been exposed to that before. So, yeah, we don't want to forget those pexy, uh, pesky syphilis infections. But we paid them back tenfold. Okay? Uh, we gave them cows, pigs, horses, lots of cattle, sugar cane, apples, cabbage, Kentucky bluegrass. But we also gave them smallpox, yellow fever, malaria. Their immune systems weren't ready for the, for the diseases we were already kind of able to withstand. So they call that the Columbian Exchange. Okay, 300,000 Indians wiped out. Estimated 90% of all the Native Americans that were here before Columbus wiped out. Okay, you need to remember the Columbian Exchange. You need to know what it meant to, hey, we take your land and we kill you. Okay, know the Columbian Exchange. Also, when you see anything written in green on my PowerPoints, you kind of need to know. Green is my color of, hey, on the test, wink. Okay. So, Feliz Navidad. Not. Okay. He um, got a larger expedition in 1493 instead of three ships, and a couple hundred men, he had 17 ships and 1,200 men, okay? He comes back to Haiti, or La Navidad, and finds it completely wiped out, deserted, gone, okay? There were problems with the Indian men um, and the uh, Spanish men that were there, uh, lots of fighting, lots of killing. Um, they demanded gold and tribute that the Indians couldn't pay, even with good intentions. Like if a Spanish Spaniard was like, I want 100,000 gold, or I'm going to chop off your head. Even if they had it, they couldn't pay it, okay? So it was, they were making demands of the natives that they couldn't do, the indigenous population, so it was gone, okay? So what happened next? Once he gets there, he divides up, goes in and says, okay, that's your land, not anymore, and divides it up, um, the Indian lands and Indians, and, and since gold couldn't be found, he brought back the next best thing. He brought back Indian slaves, or Native American slaves. So if you didn't find gold proper, he found people to help you get gold. Okay, way to go, Columbus. Then he returns to Spain in, 14, in 1496, which is three years later. Okay, that was the end of voyage number two. The end of an era. I love that. It was a bummer sticker from the George Bush um, time. Now it's an Obama sticker. You know, with it being election year, I figured I'd repurpose it. Um, but in 1498, Columbus makes a third voyage. Okay. Uh, came down more of a south, southern route down around the tip of uh, South America. Okay, He became convinced in an Otro Mundo concept. Look it up. It's on the test. It's basically a new continent off the coast of Asia. He's looking for that area. He describes the South American coast as a terrestrial paradise. Ah, okay, And the true Eden. We found, the, we found it. Right? Um, but there's a mutiny on Hispaniola, which is Hispaniola is right around the Dominican Republic era, area. Um, 100,000 people killed. Um, Columbus has uh, returned to Spain in chains. He's looked at as um, the cause of all the disease. He's called the Admiral of the Mosquitoes. Okay, What that means is that you know mosquitoes are irritating. Mosquitoes cause problems when it rains, right? So none of these problems were on the New World until Columbus came. And so the people ended up calling him the Admiral of the Mosquitoes, the Admiral of the Annoying. Okay, that might be a bonus question. Okay, 1502, he comes back, okay, um, for Central America. Um, Panama doesn't cross the isthmus that becomes the Panama Canal. He kind of stays in that general Gulf area. And he's marooned on Jamaica for nearly a year, okay, he nearly starves to death. There's a story where he's captured um, and he reads this almanac, right? He's, he's basically on Jamaica. You know, they're, they're a very religious people, <clears throat> voodoo, um, and they believe in those types of things. And he read this almanac saying, hey, there's going to be a lunar eclipse on a certain day. So he goes in and says, hey, if you do not release me, I'm going to use my power and I'm going to swallow the moon. Okay. They're like, no, 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 you're just a white man. You won't do it. Well, truth be told, lunar eclipse happened. They were all like, please pray to your God. We'll let you go. Please bring us the moon back. So the next day I came back and he's released. Okay. Very interesting concept that um, Columbus was saved of the moon. Okay, um, he returns to Spain in 1504. And Queen Isabella's death basically killed it. Okay, died in 1506. The Admiral of the Mosquitoes dead. 
Okay, gone. That's Columbus. Okay, the thing that's important about Columbus, I want you to remember about Columbus, is that the importance of him is that his his explorations were publicized. He was coming back and forth, and Spain was really putting out all this stuff that, hey, it's really there, it's really happening, it's a really good place. And when merchants and pirates and um, all these guys start hearing words of gold and new people and new places to go plunder, they're going to go over there, right? So that's the importance of Columbus. Not only, not that he discover America, but he made it possible for us to migrate or become migratory over from the English, French, Spanish area over to the New World. That's the importance of Columbus, okay? Some of his four you know, voyages, you can look at the dots here and decide which one goes where. It's very interesting um, how everything happens. Here's America, he lands down here. So really he discovered Central and South, South America. South America. Um, but here are his migratory patterns. Okay. So the Pope cries bull. Um, and once the Pope gets wind of this and the Catholic Church finds out about what Columbus is doing, um, he issues a papal bull of demarcation, which means he divides up the land. Okay. This is what who this is the control, this is the power, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The Spanish get this, the Portuguese get this. Now who's to say the Pope? has a right to do this. He's the Pope. In 1400s, 1500s, he has the right to do whatever he wants. And people do it, okay? But that wasn't really good enough for what was happening. Um, and you'll see on the next map why. So they signed the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494 between Spain and Portugal. Well, that is, they were not liking what was happening. Um, so they decided that Portugal would get everything east of the line of demarcation. And Spain would get everything west of the line. Spain got the good end of the deal. Why did they get the good end of the deal? Check it out. Huzzap. Okay. Portugal's right here. Portugal gets that. Right there. And that part of Greenland. Spain gets everything else. Of course, if you think about it, they only know a little bit about this. Right? They thought that, that was an equitable split. Not so much. Okay. Be able to talk about the importance of the Treaty of Tordesillas on the test, okay? So, there are some other conquistadores hanging around. Um, Balboa, not Rocky Balboa, Vasco Balboa. He discovered the Pacific Ocean, okay, when he crossed the Isthmus of Panama in 1513. So, Balboa discovered the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Magellan, the first one. I'm Magellan like Magellan, baby. Uh, he's the first one to circumnavigate the globe. Um, he also has a Strait of Magellan named after him in 1519. Ponce de Leon or Ponce de Leon. There's a street in Atlanta that's called Ponce de Leon, and I always laughed at it when they mispronounced it, but when in Rome, okay, uh, he found Florida uh, looking for the flame, famed Fountain of Youth, okay? So that's, he's the reason we have Florida and St. Augustine. Hernando Cortez, you know, he is buried in the Mississippi River. He was one of the first ones to really dig into Central New World to try to figure out what's going on, but his body, he was lost in the Mississippi River around 1519, 1520. Um, Pizarro, not Bizarro, but Pizarro, okay? He conquered the Incans, right? And brought tons of gold and silver, their, their um, wealth, back to Spain. So he basically started this whole gold-silver exchange. And European, pri European prices just skyrocket because of all the stuff that's added into the market. So inflation just goes crazy because of Pizarro, okay? Then you have Cabeza de Vega. Um, Vega was um, looking for Cibolo. Okay, the legendary um, uh, city of gold. Um, there were like seven cities of gold. He was looking for Cibola. Um, instead, he found the Pueblo Indians. Okay, that was in 1527. Now, Cibola is real, but was it this one? I know Nick Cage was looking for Cibola National Treasure too, but wasn't really in Mount Rushmore. Okay, thanks Hollywood. Okay, so why do we talk about these failed conquistadores? Okay, conquistadores, Spanish explorers. Why do we talk about them? Well, the effect of these failures, coupled with uh, the successes in Mexico and Peru, from you know all the gold and, and silver brought back into Europe, they lose interest in North America. Okay, the Spanish loses interest in North America, and they direct their attention south into where all the gold and silver was. You saw that map that Columbus had. All of North America was up here, and they were down here. So the English, that leaves all of that peace for the English. OK? 
Okay, so that's why we talk about the fail conquistadores because it's a very important important thing to do. Especially since the Spanish, the Spanish were the dominant sea power at the time, right? So this is the the Spanish Armada. All right, this is the Spanish Armada. These are the guys that were supposedly in, invincible. They were loonies, but they thought that they were invincible. Okay, but it allowed people like John Cabot here and the English to come over and really take over the new world. So, this is our first lecture. Uh, a little longer than I thought it would be, but about you know 25 minutes is probably the longest it'll ever be. Um, make sure you take notes on this section. There will be notebook checks on this. There will be a lecture quiz tomorrow. Uh, we're following this lecture, um, compiled with the reading you had to do. Um, this will be forever on the inter interwebs, so if you need to go back and reference this, uh, you can. Uh, email me, johnwood at johnston.k12.nc.us if you have any questions, problems, concerns. Um, other than that, um, thank you for watching. Good luck. And um, should be pretty cool. Thanks.